I've realized that your mental health is so volatile. It could go either way. You know, it's all about how you train your mind and the things you feed it. You talked about how one of those defining moments is when your father jumped up in the stands and was like, I knew, I told y'all, I told y'all. That had to be a beautiful moment for you. Talk about that relationship and how you were able to cope after he committed suicide. Yeah, it was a it was a great relationship. I think you know it was uh, uh, initially it was a little different for me to kind of come around and like I met my father when I was seven. Like he came into my life fully when I was seven, and it took me a while to get to know him and try to like you know build that rapport with him. And I did. I think by the time I like you know mid teen years, it's kind of when we started to see eye to eye. <clears throat> excuse me, and I started to kind of understand the points he was making as a, as a father and the things that I had to learn as a son and as a, and as a young man. Um, but he taught me the game of football. He taught me, you know, I never forget him coming to the crib and like uh, asking me if I, you know, next to my mom, asking me if I wanted to play football. And I kind of looked up at her and she was like, he ain't asked me, he asked you. And I was like, all right, sure. Yeah. Like I'll go play. And then I think that was the start of our bond because he taught me the game. He was around, he would pick me up every day, my brother and I, and we would go to football practice. He would go to the store and feed me an inshore, a V8, and a banana, which is probably the grossest combination. <laughs> Wait, tell me that again. What was the combo? It was a vanilla inshore, <laughs> a V8, and, and not this before V8 splash. Like there was no V8 splash. This is like tomato juice, fam, and a banana. And we'd be at, at football practice like, but. Well, why but why that combination? I just feel like we needed our nutrients and vitamins. <laughs> I don't, yo, he was, but by the way, that's something, now that I'm a dad, that's absolutely something I would do. Like I tell Kennedy like, yo, just hike up on some bananas. <laughs> <laughs> like you got golf practice, we need your stomach to be full so you can operate at a high, at optimal speed, you know what I'm saying? But my dad was such a legend, man. And I think I get a lot of this no, it's funny, Carrie, I get a lot of this, you know, yours called me bougie, um, but I think I get a lot of it from him. Like he was, for example, this is the story of my dad and you'll get exactly who he is in a nutshell. He had a baby blue uh, drop top COK 320, right? Driving. He was also the dude that had no shirt on, hat to the back, sunglasses, Maurice Malone shorts and Jordan on. Just painting the picture for you. He gets in the car, he has the car a couple months, Gets into an accident, totals the car. He was okay, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Goes to the dealership the next day after he's after he totals it and gets the black one and drops the top and is driving around with a neck brace on with his outfit in the car. <laughs> like this is my this is my father, okay? Like so wait, nobody was like so in the dealership, full neck brace, <laughs> but no signing, one <laughs> signing no, the vehicle. no one. No one was like, hey, so perhaps maybe that's not a good look or this was him. You should just lay down for a couple. <laughs> and no. Oh, that's but also it sounds like he has a great sense of humor. He had a great sense of humor. Did he? Because yeah. is that you get a lot of your humor from him? I do. My mother's funny, but my dad has I, I get a lot of the um, I mean, this is other people have said this. I'm just quoting them, the charm and the uh <laughs> <laughs> no, the the char and the humor. The humor is all him. Like he was, he's hysterical. We always had a good time laughing with, with, when he was around. I'm just quoting other people, Carrie. I don't I'm, me. It's I not. wanna if for our listeners, I need you to refer back to the beginning in which I said that this man is a combination of boozy, conceited, humbling, <laughs> humble down to earth all of it all of it wrapped in one you you love to hate him but you can't hate him because he's so sweet <laughs> other people have said this carrie i'm just quoting them i get my charm you know i'm charming you know uh <laughs> hey that's what they say <laughs> so <clears throat> did your father struggle with depression you know it's funny because i never really if he did he did a phenomenal job of hiding it from his kids um, now, did he get upset and was he in his feelings about certain things? I mean, he was a fireman for 30 plus years and then he, they ended up firing him from his job, which is what, it, you know, when you work somewhere for that long, it becomes your identity. It becomes a part of you. And I think that really hurt him in that moment. 
And I think he was trying to do a lot of things to get it back and to do different things to try to bring awareness around the things he felt uh, weren't right in, in the way that he was treated there that I just think it, it just weighed on him so heavily amongst other things that I'm sure that I don't, you know, that I don't even know he was facing that led him to, you know, to take his own life. So it's just, you know, with that being said, it just always makes me think about like my mental health and my, what my inside voice is talking about and, 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 and meditating and challenging and, and same way I'm exercising my body, I exercise my brain and the way I think and the way that I process things because I've realized that your mental health is so volatile. It could go either way. You know, it's all about how you train your mind and the things you feed it. So I always just wanted to keep that in mind, especially after facing something as tragic as that at 20 years old, when I'm in the middle of flunking out of college twice at home in Patterson, taking online courses, it felt like the world was crashing down on me in that, in that exact moment. Um, but, but it was also a moment that once it, cause my grandfather passed away shortly after that. And once those two things happened, I kind of looked around and was like, oh man, like I'm the only, I'm the man of the crib. It was my grandmother, it was my mother, it was my sisters and my older brother on my father's side. But it was like, in my home, I'm the man of the family. So I had to make changes and kind of step my game up essentially. And then that's when things started to click. I went back to college, ended up graduating with a 3.5 GPA, like just started balling. And, um, and I credit that to kind of, having those wake me up moments in, in the passing of some family members, you know? I would think, cause I haven't lost anybody close to me yet. So I don't know. And I'm asking you, like, I haven't lost a father, a mother, a grandmother. I don't know how to cope. I wouldn't even know how to begin to cope. You just do at 20 years old, you get this call or I'm assuming someone tells you and what are your first thoughts? Well, I kind of just went blank, you know, like I remember my brother calling me, and he was like, you know, yelling that daddy died, daddy died, you know? And I still remember his voice because he was like frantic. I could hear it. I can still hear it to this day. And um, and I just remember just thinking like, well, like what? Like, what are you talking about? And he just kept repeating it. And every time he said it, it just made more and more sense. It was just hitting me more like in that moment. And I was like, wow, like he's for real. Like this isn't, you know, he's not joking around. This, this is a real thing. And I just remember thinking and I, all the moments that we shared flashed through my brain, every single one, like the ones I didn't even think I remembered, I'm just flashing through all those moments, you know what I mean? And, and it just, you know, it puts everything in perspective for you. It puts everything in that moment, everything shuts down, it stops. It leads you to know and understand just how beautiful a life is and just how much you really got to cherish these moments and cherish these, these times that you have with your parents and people because you just don't know when they'll be taken from you. You know, you just have no idea. My father was what, 48 when he passed away, almost 50. Like you just have, that's super young, you know what I mean? And the part that kind of hurts me the most, I mean, kind of in hindsight, when I was 20, 21, was that he never seen me play in college. He never seen me play in college in the league. I mean, he did from heaven, of course, but it was always like, throughout my entire career, I mean, my mother always have the moment where we were like, man, what if, if your father was here, he'd be going crazy. He'd be going absolutely crazy, Carrie. Do you understand? Like, just, I, I wouldn't be, he'd be here. He'd be here next to me. Like, can I talk to Carrie? Like, what Carrie talking about? I want to talk to Carrie for something like that. I'm in the middle, like, I'm doing something. Like, he would have been that dad. You know what I mean? 